Hi, Mofi. Many developers have asked me if they should run their containers on Google Kubernetes Engine or on Cloud Run. Hi, Martin. They should use containers. Then they can start with whatever they're most comfortable with. They can always switch later. Welcome to the show, Mofi. Uh, what do you do here at Google? I'm a developer relations engineer in the GKE team. Currently, my focus is on helping our customers deploy AIML workload on Kubernetes. But generally, I like to help our users run any type of containerized workloads and find the best place to run it on Google Cloud. All right. I happen to know Cloud Run really well. Uh, it's actually my favorite product on Google Cloud. Now, developers uh, sometimes ask me if they should deploy the applications on Cloud Run or Kubernetes Engine. But you said that one should start with either one and switch later if needed? Yes. Here's an example web application that accesses Cloud SQL, like many of our users' applications. This particular app lets users vote on whether they prefer coding with spaces or tabs. I deployed it on Cloud Run already. Let's move it over to Google Kubernetes Engine. Why would I want to move it? I have heard from developers who started with Cloud Run because it's quick to launch. Then they notice that their traffic is even and predictable. They often want more control over the scaling. Mm, that makes sense. Uh, Cloud Run is really good at scaling up and down quickly, but not all apps need that. Right. Another reason to move to Kubernetes Engine is that they need bigger CPUs or more memory. Kubernetes gives you more control over the hardware. Got it. So let's say we want to move this application to Kubernetes Engine. How would we actually do that, Mofi? Well, the application was running on Cloud Run already, so it is in a container. Here it is in Artifact Registry. Now let's write some YAML. First, we need a deployment.yaml file that describes this particular deployment of the application. It will have things like label, service account, and database connection details. Next, we need a service.yaml file that describes the application type and ports. I usually don't write these YAML files from scratch myself but use a code editor plugin. It creates the outline for the file, and then I just fill in the values. And then we need to set up permissions, right? That's right. First, I will create a new service account. The application will run as this service account. Then I will grant the cloudsql.client role to the service account so the application can access a database. I will also give the service account permission to write logs and to read from the artifact registry where the container is currently stored. Then I will create a new namespace within my Kubernetes cluster. Namespaces let us divide the cluster resources between multiple users or teams. They act a bit like virtual clusters within the physical cluster, allowing for logical isolation. Then I will create the Kubernetes service account within the cluster. I will give the service account the role of workload identity user. Then I will associate my Kubernetes service account with the Google IAM service account that I created earlier. And uh, where do the database connection details go? That's next. I will use kubectl create secret to store database name, username, and password. Now it's time for kubectl apply, which will create the application and deploy it to my cluster. I'll run it now. This will take a minute. You know what that means, Mofi. Tea or coffee break. If I run kubectl get all, I can see the status of the application. This means the deployment succeeded. I'll copy the external IP address of the load balancer and paste it into my browser. And there it is, the running application. It used to run on Cloud Run, but now it's on Google Kubernetes Engine. Nice. But I have a confession to make, Mofi. What's that, Martin? I have never deployed anything to Kubernetes Engine before. Not myself, anyway. Uh, but it looks pretty easy. Yes. As long as you have your application in a container, you have options. If it's a difficulty of 4 out of 10 to get your app running on Cloud Run, it should not be more than a 6 to run it on Kubernetes Engine. I like that. Uh, so next time someone asks me whether to use Cloud Run or Kubernetes Engine, what should I tell them? Most importantly, use containers. 
then pick whatever they're most comfortable with. They can always switch later. I like that. It's nice to have options. Uh, thank you for sharing this with us, Mofi. Thanks for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions, please add them in the comments. Also, please let me know what you think of this episode. I read every single comment. Until next time.